Hi, this is more of a, a serious one today and it focuses on the pomegranate, pom sorry, pomegranate tree by Vanessa Alton. Now this was a book that I came across when I was teaching because as part of the initiative, one of the school initiatives, um, uh, authors were invited into the school to talk to pupils about their books and Vanessa Alton came into the school. A fascinating woman, absolutely. Um, she, was, um, she was a red top journalist, she used to write for the, the red top papers and her job was, one of her assignments was to go to the Turkish Riviera and meet these meet um, up with women who were going there, older women who were going there to find younger men, younger husbands. So that was the assignment that her editor had given her. But when she got to the Turkish Riviera, the story was pulled and so she just stayed on and spent her time sunning herself or whatever you do when you're in the Turkish Riviera. And she actually met her husband there and he was a Turkish Kurd. And this was at a time um, during the Arab Spring and when the Kurds were fleeing from the siege of Kaban. And this, it was a story for children that affected her. She, she came across orphan children who had fled from the war and they were arriving at these camps with no food, with there was no shelter for them. And all of these children had horrific stories, the, these children that had fled across the border on their own. And there was a phone, a photo that she came across on a phone that was taken from an, I, um, an ISIS operative. And it showed a baby being held to the ground. And so she wanted to write a story about these children. She wanted to tell this, these children's stories. And so she wrote The Pomegranate Tree. And it's the story of 13-year-old Dilvan, who is separated from her family. And the opening chapter, I, she certainly pulls no punches. Um, so I'll, I'll read you the beginning. I stopped writing and poked the end of the biro into the pomegranate shell and sucked to the juice as I read the six words over and over and over. Seeing my name written down made it seem real, official. I am real. I am numb. I am wobbling and I can still hear the whistling in my ears. I don't know what's real. Perhaps writing it down will make sense of this strange world that is so familiar and yet changed beyond all recognition. I stopped sucking the pen and started to write some more. My name is Dilvan. That's real. I'm 13. That's real. I'm Kurdish. That's real. I've just eaten a pomegranate. That's real. This morning my baby sister was beheaded. Oh God, don't let that be real. I'm not certain. That's the opening of the book. I mean, how powerful is that? When she was talking to the pupils about the, her, her life and her, her visits to these camps, you could, the silence in the room was, was tangible. And, and you had all those teachers at the back, th those of us that were mothers and you know, we could relate to, to the stories in a way that the pupils perhaps couldn't, you know, and we had a row of teachers at the back, all of us with tears in our eyes as she was telling this story. And her parting words, she, she said to the pupils when, when she left, she said, I'm passing the baton on for you. Sorry, I'm passing the baton to you. And she charged them with the responsibility of taking this world of ours and changing it to protect the innocent and the caring. I, she was a wonderful lady to meet. And this book, uh, I, I won't part with it because it's inscribed and it's have hope and be happy. That's what she wrote in the book for me. So that was the day that I met Vanessa Alton and you know, it 
talked about with her her experiences in these these camps for the children and the inspiration for the story and um, yeah so it is a more serious one today it's a very uplifting book it's full of horror and peril but it is also full of hope and courage and uh, yeah so if you like the video tick like and subscribe and um, I'll speak to you later happy reading bye